Hi folks, my name is Lisa Väisänen, I am an art historian and I would like to look together with you uh, work of uh, Pablo Picasso. Uh, this work was made in 1937, its name is Kernika, it might be the most famous work of him. Um, uh, this, uh, what we are having in the photo, uh, is uh, look like, it's a copy on uh, ceramic tiles. So it's not, um, in fact, the original paint. Uh, original paint is in uh, Reina Sofia Museum at Madrid, uh, but uh, uh, this um, copy on ceramic tiles uh, is in a city named Guernica Lumo in Spain. And maybe you can already see from the name of the work, Guernica, and the uh, name of the city, Guernica, that uh, this copy is in a very place where all this happened. The difference with the Guernica, the name of the place, and the name of the painting Guernica, uh, it's giving us already a hint about what it's talking about. You can see there is an extra U in it. Uh, Guerra in Spanish means war. And in fact, uh, this um, painting was made because of the civil war and it's talking about the war. Uh, maybe we could think a little bit the situation uh, when it was made, because it explains a lot. Uh, in the civil war situation in Spain, uh, 1937, uh, there was um, a bombardment uh, by the uh, bombers uh, of uh, Franco, which practically killed uh, all the civil citizens. Uh, in this small city. Um, it's in a area in Spanish which is called a Basque country and they were practically all republicans uh, when Franco, uh, as we know, awarded to have the, uh, the dictature. And uh, um, in the war, uh, of course, there were cities which were more strategical, like Bilbao, which is uh, very near. And we might ask, why didn't he hit in a very big city? Why did he hit a small town? Um, the reason is that this uh, town of Kernika is a holy place. It's the sacred city of the uh, Basque country citizens. Uh, ever since. Already in the medieval times, they were uh, always having their rituals there. Um, they are having a sacred oak, and the sacred oak, it's in uh, Guernica. It still is, there is a, uh, always a, a, a sacred oak. It's something very symbolic. And uh, when the friend of Franco, named uh, Hitler, uh, were having a new bombers and he was asking where he could uh, prove them, approve them, how they are working. Franco said, I know just the place where you could come. And uh, then they were bombarding uh, this uh, Guernica city practically all the day, killing all the civilians, the, especially the ladies and the children, because almost all the men were on, on war. Um, of course, Franco didn't want that everybody knows what he has done, because it's not a nice thing to do, to kill civilians. And he was thinking, because in 37 there were so many other problems in uh, in world, and uh, especially in Europe, he was thinking no one knows what he has done in a small place uh, called Guernica. But there was one uh, journalist, and this journalist escaped. Uh, he had seen all. He came to Paris, where Picasso was uh, where those days, and he told Picasso what he has seen. And uh, that, uh, Picasso then made painting. And uh, this is it. And uh, this was um, the way for Picasso, uh, by art, to tell what has happened, uh, that there are uh, in the civil war, they are killing innocent persons. So let's look a little bit what he is telling us and how he is telling about this uh, historical fact. Um, ever since 
the symbol of the war has been a horse. Um, it might be very difficult for us to think about it now, because nowadays uh, horses are just a cute animals. Uh, but um, uh, until in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, seeing a horse, uh, it was something like to see a tank uh, for for us nowadays, because horse, uh, horses, in fact, uh, they were used for making wars. And that's what we are seeing immediately. Uh, Picasso has put in this one the horse in the very middle, and we can even saw, uh, see that the horse is uh, furious. Um, so he's telling us with this figure, I am talking about a war. Uh, we also see what happens to the civilians in, uh, in war. Uh, there is a man which is killed by the horse, so the symbol of the war. It's not so awful. Of course, it's awful in in sense that uh, he is dead, but we can see in his hand there is a small flower. So a little bit of the optimism uh, also in this, uh, uh, this terrificant work we are seeing. Uh, then we are seeing like the alter echo of Picasso. Uh, he's the guy coming out in this one. If you're looking, um, the colors uh, are dark. Uh, it's like in a cellar. It's like uh, somewhere we can't see because that's the thing what Franco wanted, that no one knows what he has done. And then there is this guy coming to see and giving light. Uh, it's the Picasso's alter echo, uh, and he's exactly doing this by his work, by making his painting and exposing his painting. He's telling to the rest of the world uh, what has happened, that in this war, uh, war they have killed uh, the innocent citizens. Uh, then we are seeing here, this. Uh, uh, it's like the mythological Minotaurus. Uh, Minotaurus in uh, Greek mythology uh, was a monster uh, who was uh, always uh, needing and eating and killing innocent persons. Um, Picasso also in the other works has used many times uh, Minotaurus uh, uh, as a symbol for the Franco and what uh, he has done. Uh, just above this, uh, we can see uh, a lady, a mother, with a, chil a child who is dead. Uh, this is also, it's like the allusion. Uh, in art, we often use allusions. And this allusion, mother with the child, uh, to everyone who has a little bit looking the Western art knows it's like the Madonna and the child. But when the child is dead, we are calling it Pietà. Uh, so it was the uh, dead Christ uh, when he is in um, uh, Virgin Mary's, Mary's lap. Uh, how wonderfully um, the feeling of the mother having uh, her children, uh, her child dead, uh, is made here. You can see the expression of the mouth. The tongue is so pointed. Uh, it's like the awful cry. Uh, we, are, we are even hearing the awful cry, uh, the disparate cry coming from the mouth of the mother. Uh, if we are looking still to the right side of this building, uh, we can see there are these persons who are trying to go out from this awful situation. We can see the small window there. Okay, this is the message, message in general, because I wanted to tell the world what has happened. Uh, maybe we should, because uh, this is a cubism style, which is made by Picasso. Picasso was uh, uh, one of the first um, uh, cubistic uh, artist. He was uh, 
one, uh, one of the ones who created it. So let's look a little bit about this style and what, how does it uh, to know about it, I would like you um, to take a look at the old ancient Egyptian uh, style of making. Mm, the problem uh, for Picasso uh, in the ordinary classical art uh, was the uh, free dimension. Um, actually, we see how we have been learned to make to see. Uh, we all know that in a painting we always have only two dimensions, uh, but we are making like it was three dimensions. And to make this three dimensions, we are using the mathematical perspective. It's like a contract between the painter and uh, us who are looking at the painter, that we say, okay, if something is above, it's further. If something is smaller, it's further. And uh, uh, Picasso was questioning uh, if this is the right way to make uh, the deepness in the works, and he said it is not. Uh, some kind, he, some kind, he's very, he's very right on it. Uh, because it's true, always in the painting, we are still having only two, two dimensions. We never can have the third one, the deepness. And if we are using the old mathematical perspective when we are looking, uh, it's, um, uh, it's like a very stable. It, mm, it needs <laughs> that we are uh, keeping and staring in the very same place and we don't change our place at all because um, we are observing uh, all the world moving all the time and that's the thing Picasso wanted to tell us when he was uh, creating uh, cubism um, and he was very interested about the old arts like the uh, old um, Egyptian art and he noticed that they have this uh, wonderful thing about the observation point and always when you are painting you should paint it, uh, paint it from the observation point which is the most useful the most appropriate let's look what does it mean because uh, in the world you can see all the things under, above, left or right. So why should you take the most uh, um, awful point to paint something when you can use the most appropriate point also? So let's look what in Egyptian art uh, they were doing. When they are making the feet, uh, they are making it from the side. Uh, and also all the leg, because the legs are made for walking. This is the best way to make us understand that there is a leg and the legs are made of moving. But when you are coming above the legs to the human corpse, it doesn't make any sense uh, to paint it from the side. It's better to paint it from straight because then you can see all the uh, both of the shoulders and both of the hands also and both of the arms of course if you are making it from the same point of view you were making the legs you just don't see uh, the shoulders and both of the hands so it's more appropriate to do it this way then we are coming to the head which one we take let's take this one so uh, from the head uh, the profile is the most appropriate point uh, to make the painting uh, or the picture because then you can say see the nose, you can see the mouth, you can see the cheek, uh, you can see the ear. So they were putting the head sideways. Uh, of course, uh, our eye, uh, it's not useful to make the eye from the side because you don't really see it very well you can see the form of the eye, eye better if you are taking it from straight ahead and 
so they are taking the i and they are putting on the tempo so um, this is the question of the observation point and in cubism they think that you should paint everything from that observation point where the thing is most clear to see so here we can see uh, like the nostrils of the human being the nostrils it's better to make it from under you can see them even though the nose is from profile and uh, there is the mouth also you can see the mouth is made it's a little bit the lower part is made from the above and the teeth from the other side and here you can see the same thing from the eyes we were talking in the Egyptian work uh, so uh, Picasso uh, is thinking and the cubists are thinking in generally uh, that because we are observing and we are moving in the world all the time uh, that's the right way to make the three-dimensional work not the old uh, old-fashioned way of uh, of painting where you are looking in the fixed point point from everything so just, uh, they just observe the world they take the most appropriate point of use and then they mix them uh, that's the idea of the cubism um, Picasso was very good um, uh, in, in speaking he was uh, always having ready the answer uh, of course there were persons who didn't like this new cubistic, uh, cubistic style and there was a man uh, who was furious seeing these kind of the things and when he uh, see him, uh, uh, he saw Picasso uh, he told that I don't like your photo, uh, your paintings at all because they are not realistic and Picasso was asking so tell me or show me a realistic picture I would like to know what is realistic if this isn't and the man was taking from his wallet a small photo uh, of his wife uh, telling that this is realistic and uh, Picasso was looking it for a second and telling oh I am so so surprised about uh, if this is realistic because I can see that your wife is totally flat uh, he is uh, black and white obviously it was a black and white photo uh, your wife uh, seems to be something like three centimeters tall and that's the point what is realistic uh, that's the revolution of the cubism uh, cubism, tells, cubism is telling us that we can see the world in the different point of the views but the painting itself it always remains two-dimensionals. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening this far. Uh, maybe we can uh, meet again with an uh, other painting. Uh, thanks, folks. Bye.